So, so the next thing we'll discuss is, can we perform some mathematical analysis to qualitatively say something about the behavior of this equation? And if we can, then how do we ensure that we accurately approximate these qualitative behaviors, the, I mean, these quantitative behaviors with a numerical scheme? And in particular, is the finite difference method we studied before still a good way to discretize it? Okay, let's, uh, it's already finished. All right, so, uh, by the way, there is no, there is a, uh, no apparent reasons that can prevent you from using finite difference to solve these equations, right? Everything you have studied applies to here, right? If we use finite difference, we are approximate, we know the values of u at the grid points, and usually you know f, for example, f is equal to u squared divided by two, right? And if you know f, then you can evaluate the value of f u at these grid points. Now you know the f at the grid points, you can use finite difference to approximate df dx also at the grid points. And then you can plug that value into an ODE solver to solve for u. I mean, there is no, in terms of procedure, there is a, a nothing that prevents you from doing that. All right. But let's look at uh, uh, if that is a, a good idea, especially once you have continuities like that. Once you have discontinuities like that, um, can somebody think of any reason that uh, it should or shouldn't work with finite difference? Right, if the discontinuity doesn't lie exactly on the grid, it won't be captured, so it'll be basically we have a discontinuity between two grid points. Okay, yes? The contribution for from higher derivatives to the, uh, to the Taylor approximation would be much larger. Right. So the truncation error is going to be very large. The truncation error is also going to be very large, right? That's another good reason. Anybody think of anything else? Okay, so, so these are very two good reasons that uh, the stability is actually not a primary concern because if your scheme is stable, it'll be stable for whatever solution, right? So the primary concern is that, uh, these are actually a single concern, is that uh, the approximation error is actually gonna be huge, right? One is because the discontinuity is almost always going to be lying in between two grid points. And in finite difference, there is no way to capture where that discontinuity is because I only know the values at the grid points. Two is that the truncation error, for example, uh, would be depending on the third derivative of the solution. So no matter how you approximate the discontinuity, if you have the values, if you if a true solution is like this, and if you have the value here, value here, even if you are approximating the solution like that, the third derivative is going to be huge at some point, right? So the error in finite difference approximation is going to be very large if you apply the finite difference scheme to something with discontinuity. All right. And uh, unlike in the project where the, the kind of discontinuity only happens at the first time step, oh, in here we expect the discontinuity to stay in the solution, right? Because if you look at here, the solutions keep bumping into each other. I mean, the solutions, the, the lines we call characteristic lines, basically the contours of the solution in the space time plot keeps running into the discontinuity. So the discontinuity is going to be there every time step.